All right, so we just saw someone, a, a successful entrepreneur, just talk to you. And let's just debrief for five or 10 minutes. Because like, people go, well, he didn't, he didn't do exactly what you say you should do, right? He didn't read Disciplined Entrepreneurship, and he was, he was successful. We're going we're gonna to do the index cards later. They, they went out to go get them, right? I think they went out to. I think they have these cards instead. Oh, they're not going to get the other ones? No, this is, this is all they have. They could run to a goddamn store. There are stores in Brisbane, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this place is coming apart here. <laughs> so you just saw someone, and he did not read Disciplined Entrepreneurship, yet he was successful. So what do you take away from that? Yeah. See, this is the thing. People go, oh, this person didn't read your book, and therefore, see, it doesn't work. You don't need to read your book. That's not the point. I, I don't want you to actually have to read my book. I want you just to know the right kind of approach to problems, first of all. So this is what I do. I look at people like this. It's not just like when I teach entrepreneurship, I don't just like, take my experience and, and give them to you. You know, success is a choice. Choose success. I did. What does that do, right? You know, you should be a basketball player. I don't, I'm not a basketball player, you know. So what, is, what do you learn from these things watching them? Well, yes. No, but I can tell you, like, to being a successful entrepreneur is like being a basketball player. And then you say, oh, I'm not a basketball player. It's not, it's, it's, we're trying to get to more universal truths. So why was he disciplined? Why was he disciplined? What, what did he do? Wait, I'm going to get some people in the back to make sure that we get, I want to get more people involved today who have not been talking, all right? Because I'm not convinced all of you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Let me get someone who hasn't talked. You, <laughs> madam. Oh, no, no, you haven't. You haven't either. No, don't defer. Don't defer. He talks. What do you, why do you have your coat on? It's not that cold here. It's like, it's like 85 degrees. All right, sorry. What, why was he disciplined? He said, we're good at this, and we're not good at this. We're going to do this. So he was actually kind of going through that. And he was prone to actually, yes? Uh, he focused on the exact of the you wanted it, and he did it from the other school he was kidding. Yeah, yeah. And you know one of the reasons why he was super focused? Because he had no investment. Like, he had to be scrappy, right? And this idea that you raise money and it makes you successful, it's not always true. A lot of, most, when you look at successful entrepreneurs who scale, they don't, more often than not, they start in times of recession where there's not money because they build up this muscle to be very, very cheap. They know how to make a dollar go a long ways. And then that muscle continues when they go forward. So not having money actually is, is, is not what you wish on yourself. But it turns out to be a good thing because you build up this muscle to, to be able to get by with it. He was like, yeah, you know, I, the, what, I love the quote. He goes, we didn't do anything strategic. We just worked really, really hard. Remember that? Yeah. And why, why was that? Yeah. And what's the number one job of the CEO in a startup? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you don't run out of money. <laughs> and to sit around and talk about strategy does not make you money. Like, you got to go out and you got to make enough money. And now once we have enough money, now we can start thinking a little more strategically. But he had to be focused because he knew that he, A, had to get money, and then, B, he had to, like, if he wanted to grow this business. You heard him talking about, I didn't want to build a small business. I want to build one that was really big. So any other comments about it? I want from some people... Yes. Um, even though he didn't use the words, he's got that growth 
mindset is got like what's the next version of myself is iterating, is improving. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. I'm sorry we get ahead here on some of the things, but we're gonna talk about kind of how do you scale a business? How do you, how do you how do you get go from the beachhead market to the next market to the next market to the next market here? what are called follow-on markets, step 14. So every time I hear an entrepreneur talk, believe it or not, most of the successful entrepreneurs in the world have not read Disciplined Entrepreneurship. <laughs> and, and they haven't gone through a boot camp. But you're, I'm always looking to see what can I learn from that and what does it validate that we've already done. And you have to understand, there are many paths to success. There's no one single path to success here. And so each of you will have a different journey. And each of you will take these first principles and you'll apply them in different ways. But there will be a suite of ones that you basically, almost all of you will apply those. Even no matter what industry it is. Even if you're in oil and gas or you're doing an app for social media, uh, for social networking. All right. So um, let's talk about the PMR you've done, all right? We're, uh, let's, get, let's get a team, like right there. Are you guys all a team? No. All right. Who, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cold call someone. Uh, how about you, this right here. Are you one team? Yeah, you are. All right. Tell us about your PMR experience. It started this morning, right? Do, do we have a microphone? I can talk You can. And we also have technology here at QUT. <laughs> By the way, just revert, I just want to point out for those who weren't here, QUT is a school of engineering. This is an engineering problem, and they can't freaking fix it, right? <laughs> Someone's going like, to lose a laptop. What's that? Does that not work? Okay, so what's your what's what's your what's your initial idea? So travelers who are coming here here all abroad and then try to um, uh, go party. Go party. Yeah. Not go potty, go party. Both could be a problem. It's, you know, it depends on what you want to deal with, right? So people internationally who come here to party, all right? That's their initial hypothesis. Remember, your initial idea is just your starting point. Like Matt Marks at MIT shows that in his research that people start with an idea, and the great companies do this thing called switchback. They go back and forth until they figure out what the right thing to do is. The food spoiling company, I don't know where you are, but spoiler alert, didn't know what they were going to do. They just wanted to work in this general area. Then they go back and forth. HubSpot, many of you know HubSpot. HubSpot started off as legal spot before they kind of found the right path. OK, so your initial hypothesis is people who come to Brisbane and want to party, right? I mean, the, the main problem was as well to uh, basically, that they find the right spot. They find the right spot. Yeah. OK. But, uh, so, so where did you start? So we're actually Team 13. Um, so we knew that there's Nomads, which is a backpack is about a K from here, um, which is a hostel where people like to party. It has a bar inside. But we also knew that there was a walking tour at 10.30 where um, tourists would go. Yeah, yeah. We, we divided and conquered, split off into teams and tackled that. And in doing that, we actually realized a few things. Like, firstly, that there was a really valid window of opportunity within our, our market. There was people um, like who were looking to party. They had a limited time frame. They, um, they were looking for a wait. certain experience. But wait, wait, you're, you're, you're talking so fast. <laughs> All right. 
let's, let's, let, let, let's, let's decompose this. This is real time here, all right? And then we're going to do a little exercise where people, where you talk amongst your groups and you think about what advice would you give them, what help would you give them, okay? So it's, interna is it international or it's visitors? What is it, visitors? Yeah. Visitors, okay? Visitors to Melbourne, I mean vis vis visitors, visitors to Bris Vegas, right? <laughs> Who want to party. Yeah. Want to party, okay? So this is where they start, right? Now, they go to collect information, they go to the walking tour, correct? Okay? Well, one, two, PMR. Okay. What next? They ever started asking them how usually they do, what they do, and how they do to go after a party where you're traveling to someone. Okay, so you asked question, which was? How do you look for a party when you're traveling somewhere? How do you search, search for a party? Okay, and you, we're going to give you one more bullet. What did what happened then? I actually got asked out on a date, which was pretty funny. <laughs> okay. Um, but <laughs> and what did you say? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> she she got asked out on a date. I said I have class from 7 a.m. till 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst kiss. <laughs> worst kiss ever. <laughs> All right, focus, focus, focus. All right, what, 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 what happens next? So, so basically, they were saying uh, that they were possible. So, so you got some answers, and you believe they would ask local? The, the answers were they would ask locals. Ask locals and search in Google. Ask locals, locals, oops, and search on Google. Okay. Before I start to, de to, to give feedback on this, I want all the rest of you to like go in your groups, and I want you to write down one. I want you to write down on a piece of paper one thing that you think you could do to improve what they did to just do PMR. What type? What? Give me. Give us one thing. All right. Do you want to sit next to our Not right now. Just to the people that are, you're sitting with now, like th groups of three or four. You can even go up to five. All right get enough time to fully explain what they were doing, but that's okay. This is a learning exercise, all right? This is a learning exercise. All right, let's start with you all. What would, th you are two, you're two different teams. What one thing would you tell, would, what piece of advice? Ask leading questions rather than, you know, something which you know you'll get a standard response for. Ask leading questions. Do we like that? No, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> But thank you for, but, but that's okay. This is, this, you don't lead the witness. You're, you're trying to figure out. So you're not trying, you're trying not to narrow it and say, did you think, did you think my lecture today was great or the greatest ever? <laughs> that's called a leading question, right? No, we're just trying to figure out the question. Okay. Is that the right thing to figure out the question? All right, let's go to here. Um, we're thinking more like, What are they looking for? Okay, the as-is state. The as-is state. That's a really, that's a really, 
I like that. So we're trying to figure out kind of what are the right questions to ask without leading the witness. All right, let's go to, let's go to you all right here. Mr. Argentinian cold man. <laughs> I think I first will like, target the customer I'm interviewing. Ah, ah, did everybody hear what he said? Yeah. That's pretty good. What did he say? So first, here, can we, does this work? Testing, testing. Does this work? There's a button right here. Watch this. We have the technology. We will not be defeated. <laughs> testing. There we go. Look at that, huh? I will first like target the customer I'm interviewing. It's working. Just, just, just be like Mick Jagger. Put it right in there, all right? I would like first like target the customer. I mean. So first he would target the customer. Did everybody understand that? Why is that important? Did other people have that? This is a good start. I want to go down this route. Wait, I'm going to go to someone in the back. You... Yes? The first point of visitors to Brisbane who want to party is very broad. They... Yes! They've gone to their second point to do the research in a really tight demographic of young people generally with low disposable income and they've been facing their... Okay. Yeah, so everyone, can everyone hear what he said? The first thing I, 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 I had to be quiet is visitors to Bris Vegas who want to party. What visitors to Bris Vegas, right? What, what market segments are you looking at? So first you got to segment that out. Is it different? It, would it be different if it was Americans who were in college or Chinese people who are here? it would be much different, right? So you're, you're looking to try to figure out what segments. And, we're, and, and I would say, we're not predetermining that, but you, you have to think very carefully now, market segmentation, right? Market segmentation. Well done. Well done, Tonto. So, <laughs> so the first one was asking questions about the as-is state. I like that a lot. The other one is, let's start figuring out what market segments that we're going to be going after, right? I'm, the, the, this is probably not fair to you all, because you might have done this, but that's OK. It's more about the process. Trust the process. All right, who else? No, you, you, you've contributed some great stuff, but we're going to get. Yes? Uh, define what a party means today. Yes, specificity. We're going to get into this. What does a party mean? Does that? Does that does everybody know what, does party mean the same thing to everybody? Does that mean going to a bar? Does that mean going to someone's house? Does that mean going to a, you know, disc, what is actually, what are we talking about here, right? Why are you laughing? You, you just like all parties. <laughs> I'll take anyone. But I think the question here of, as you start to go into this, you, before you go too far, you're going to have to start segmenting the customer and segmenting what do you mean. This is, this is pretty, pretty broad here, all right? And then we're going to be getting after the as-is state. What else does somebody want to contribute? You, your, your team just contributed. I want something from over here. Yes? Um, I'm not sure if that's happened, but instead of not jumping straight into how do you search for a party and setting the scene, saying, hi, we are opportunities. Yes. Yes. Would it be good? Would it be okay to chat for a little while? So we yes. So the approach, uh, the approach is very important when you're doing primary market research. And did, and, it, and I just want to go back to this. She was asked out on two dates. Were any of the guys asked out on dates? Maybe another well, <laughs> That is wildly inappropriate, um, <laughs> and we will find you. <laughs> um, so, so wait, I, I just want to make a point here is that who approaches in this? Tina Seelig at Stanford, I don't know if you know, any of you know her. She's, on, she's one of the heads of their entrepreneurship center at Stanford. She did this, and she found it was much better to have a woman 
it, it could be a woman and a guy, but at least a woman approaching people because they're going to be more open to, to talking to you, right? And you will see this when you go out and do primary market research, by the way. And you almost want to let the woman be the one who's like being the, the empathetic listener and pulling the information out, and the guy observes. Because guys are very useless anyway, so you might as well just have them take some notes, right? Yeah, it's true. So the technique that you're going about there, I, like, I, I actually like that, that she was like, yeah, the people ask But that means they're like being open. Now, is there bias there? Yes. When they see her coming up, so you're going to have to be careful the way you dress, too. And you, when you come up, you've got to get them, yes, they're open, and now let's not have them thinking about a date. Let's be thinking about what we're going to do otherwise, right? All right. Walk, walking. Uh, go to the walking tour. You like that? Yeah. So, so it is a good start. It is a good start. A good start. Anything worry you about it? Yes. Sir, yes. I think once you break down the sisters, the kind of party you meet, then you decide on location. Right. So this is going to, you might go here to try to figure out what market segments you're going to be looking at. You're going to get skewed ones at the, the, the walking tour. What other watering holes might you consider? Yes. Yeah, so, so that's really good. So if you want the really heavy partiers, they're not going to be here, right? You're going to have families and kids here, maybe, right? So, so you would start to think about what watering holes would they go to, right? And what time would they go to them, right? And maybe you're at the pharmacy getting the hangover medicine there and saying, oh, hi, thank you very much. We, you know, <laughs> can we talk to you? Or where else might you go? Offices? Offices? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe if there's some justification. I don't, I don't see it. But, there's, but she said one. Yes. The airport. Maybe. Maybe. You, you would sample different things. But she laid out a, good, a very good one right in her sentence. Yes? PlayStations. PlayStations. Oh, police stations. <laughs> That's the extreme. But, but, yeah, yeah, she said, but it's not hotels. Do they stay in host, they, hostels, not hotels, hostels. So again, you're getting at this, and this actually is, is, is what you did, right? So walking tours and hostels, but now you're going to start to have to figure out is, which is the right watering hole for, once you choose a market segment, which is the right watering hole for you. And there would be many potential market segments here that they could go after. And they're going to have to make a decision as to what they're going to go after. And once they make that decision, the watering holes are going to get clearer and clearer. If it's going to be Chinese princelings who are in Brisbane, well, guess what? We can probably drill down and figure out a whole set of watering holes that are going to be different than millennials from California, right? Yes? What are your thoughts on going to people that organize the parties? I think that would be an interesting one as well. The, the, be, there'd be positive, that, that would be an influence or that would be a stakeholder. What downside would there be to that? Yeah, they're going to have, they're, they're in a business to try to get people in there, and all of a sudden they're going to be thinking, how do you help them make money, right? So they're kind of like a channel, and channels, sales channels, don't give you the best information. You want to go to the end users and not go through. Like, if you go to, if you go to Walmart and say, hey, what do you think about, you know, razor blades, they're going to say, you should come to Walmart and buy razor blades at Walmart, right? <laughs> because that's how they make money. Whereas if you go all the way to the end user, you'll be better off. Yes, my Mexican friend. Yes, I would just like to ask to this comment. Uh, I, I did talk to a manager from the store for our project. Yeah. And I, I think that it will, 
I approached to him and said that I was going to ask things for academic purposes, like yes. for research. Yes. He was super open to tell me all of the different variables that he would see in his customers. So what? What? I'm sorry. What's your name again? Valeria. V Valeria said she went to a store and told him, "Hey, I am I am going I am doing work for a class. I wouldn't say academic research. I'd say." I'm working on a, on a class project for MIT and QUT, and all of a sudden, like, oh, yeah, let's help you. That, and that is a great opening to get questions, um, because then they're going to feel like paternal, maternal towards you, whatever it is. So this, this is actually a, a, a very good start, but now you're going to start doing market segmentation. And as you do market segmentation, you're going to find better watering holes. You're going to start to build a, a robust persona quickly. And by the way, you could probably choose multiple different segments and be successful. Um, there's not just one path to success here. But, you, but to try to do like all three at the same time, you will end up failing because you won't do it. But if you just pick one and you get after it, maybe it doesn't work. But you'll find out, you'll pull back up, and you'll go, all right, let's go after this, this one. So do the market segmentation on who the visitors are. Define, at some point, you're going to have to define this. I am actually less worried about defining this up front. I am more concerned about getting the market segmentation right. So, um, and then once we do the market segmentation, we might have some hypothesis about it. Go to the walking tours, but again, we've already talked about what the bias would be there. But the bias to action, I love. They get out there and do something. And then they, went, then they realize, oh, the hostels would be better where they went. And you start refining this and getting better and better at it. And so then how do you search for a party? Um, again, the issue here is what do we mean by a party, right? Um, what, how, do we, how do you search for social activities? How do you do that? There, there's, there's a lot of questions that would start to. And then, um, and then that, this stuff down here will start to follow um, after that. But that's the general process. Got it? Makes sense? Let's ask the team. So tell us, what happened? Come on up here and stand up here. Act professorial with your Gronkowski shirt on. <laughs> so we split up into two groups, and one kind of tried to target the walking tour, and one went to the, the hostels. And, and we, we let you, what we did is we split up into two pairs, so to have the, the conversation and have someone kind of take notes. Uh, and the first thing I kind of was the odd one out. So what I did, I did kind of do the. the you were watching the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I actually went into, into the tourist centre because that's where we started, like tourist office. Yeah, yeah. And it seemed quite interesting. I thought, oh, I might be able to intercept some of these target customers. We started to talk about it's probably yeah. younger people. Party probably means more like clubbing. Um, and one thing that we noticed was there were basically no young people in there. Yeah. So. Do, do young people go to tourist office? I, I'm not young. And I, they go there to book backpacking tours and you know, do stuff, but the business are the same. My, my, yeah, my kids just get on, they do everything off their phone. But, but I, I, I could be wrong. That's, that's, that's Americans from Massachusetts, Northeast. Maybe, where are you from? Oh no, I'm just thinking about the trip I went to Tasmania recently and all the backpacking Okay. Um, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but Tasmania is an outlier in terms of the tourism industry. Yeah. Um, so that is what I was thinking. Yeah. So I think it's a good point that you bring up because that's something that I think we should be thinking about. Yeah. Do not be a hater here. It's all love. It's all love in this room. But, but, but anyway, you, you get the process. All right. Anything else you want to add to this? I want, because I want to do another team here. Uh, any, any other thing? So we, we kind of, what we also did is then try and put some observation on the PMR rather than having those conversations, so... Yes, good. You don't just ask people, you observe what they do. Don't just believe what they say, observe what they do. Great. Uh, so yeah, so that was, 
that was kind of where, rather than, that, that's a difficult thing with having the introduction, even if you say, like, oh, we're doing this course. Yeah. Suddenly make an assumption of what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we try that. And if he's wearing that shirt, for instance, as soon as you walk up, the, what, what, do you, what do you think? America, America, stupido americano, stupido americano. <laughs> and then the pretentiousness just overwhelms you, right? <laughs> so uh, we're going to do one more. But let's just cut to the, let's just cut to the chase here. Um, the answer for this is going to be Kyrgyzstani people here from MIT. That's the that's the beachhead market, right? Is there a dean here? <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Who's our next victim? Thank you very much. What? You can stay here. You can stay here. But all the details matter, and you think through this stuff. I mean, isn't it? It's like kind of obvious once you start thinking about it, right? All right, who's going to be our next victim? No, no, no. You, wait, wait. We're going to let other people who are quiet here, all right? No, you're not quiet. You're not quiet either. We're going to have this team right here, because Japanese are so, so. <laughs> all right. Come on up and tell everybody what you did. Four steps. All right. So where's the rest of your team? Let's do this. All right. Just like we did for them. You, only, you can't give like a lecture on this. You can just say like four things, OK? Take it away. Yes. Here, here, I'll write. I'll write. You talk, and I'll write. Uh, so we're focusing on solo travelers um, and basically what pain points they have when they're solo traveling. Okay. So, we're, so we had some. Wait, wait uh, solar? So, so, solar? Solo. Like. Oh, oh. like <laughs> Why don't you guys speak American? It's really annoying. So, no, it's because I have a meshed accent. Canada meets Australia. <laughs> Solo travelers? Um, discomforts. 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 Okay. Discomforts. Discomforts. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So, no, you, you come over here. Okay. So then so I'll stand over here. Solo travelers and what their discomforts are. So we decided to talk about the different types of solo travelers and who we would target. We split up and we went out. Wait, 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 wait. So you segmented this, market yeah. segments. Did you really do that or did you just learn from the last talk and then you decided so you do that? Yeah, we totally did. Yeah, we said, okay. Okay. Like, um, intentional, like I want to see the world and decided I went through a breakup and I just. So you, you just basically built. Personas of yeah. Uh, people. Yeah. Beautiful. Another business. Yeah, yeah, not, not a robust one, but you said here's kind of a profile. I'm sorry, profile, not a persona. Yeah. So then we said like business solo travelers. Many of you would be solo travelers because you're here alone to study. Mm -hmm. um, unintentional solo travelers. Like mm -hmm. my friend bailed on me, but I'm still going to go on that trip. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Yeah. So then we uh, divided and conquered. Yeah. Um, so a few of us went around QT, a few of us went to hotels, and a few of us started to make phone calls. OK. Phone calls. And, and one last thing. What did you, what did you say to him? Uh, we went up and said, hi, we're QT slash MIT students. We're doing some research on solo travelers. Have you ever traveled on your own before? And and, and can you tell us how did you approach them? Um, Let's role play. He's sitting at the hotel on his computer. Well, I didn't go to the hotel, so maybe we'll get the guy. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. He, he, do your thing. Yeah. He's sitting right here. Start shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so on, on this particular 
particular matter, we had a pretty significant learning because it was myself and Raymond approaching. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and we discovered the hard way that it is not the right approach because we approached seven persons and nobody wanted to chat with us. The lady swerved away from me. <laughs> yeah, they were literally, away. literally going. Going across the street just to report <laughs> Yeah, so that, that was. Uh, all right. Yeah. All right, so, we, so we, that's it. We, every, we've got it. You all have like four minutes or so to say what, do you, what, what kind of things do you think you would add to this? They, 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 they're solar, travel, solar travelers' discomforts. They segmented the markets, they burnt profiles. They then asked them, they, they were trying to find out why they were doing that. They divided uh, up, and some went to QUT, some went to hotels, did phone calls, and then th it was basically, have you ever traveled on your own before? Is that fair? Yeah, if, if I may add, the why was broadly open. Yeah. I mean, we didn't suggest anything. It's just, how do you feel how, when you travel solo? That Good. Is. All right, everybody got it? And you can actually say nice things to them. That's mildly helpful. But uh, what, what, what other things do you, you worry about with this team? OK? Now this is your chance to get back, all right? <laughs> all right, why don't you guys grab some seats and just wait till they're done, all right? Grab some yeah. seats together. All right, everybody. I just, heard, I just heard a really good hack here. Like, if people, you're talking the last one about you know, what do you like to party? You're trying to segment people. You know, sometimes we talk about cars. What type of music do you like, right? That could be a quick segmentation for you. So for, at, the, at our trust center at MIT, we go in and we ask people, what type of entrepreneur are you? And then we segment them that way. Are you a, uh, you, do you want to start a company yourself, be a founder? Do you want to be a joiner? Are you a curious entrepreneur? So we segment them right at the beginning with that. But a really simple, non-confrontational way would be, hey, what kind of music do you like? And I think that would create some interesting market segmentations. It's essentially a proxy for a bunch of other things. All right, let's go, let's go to this team right here, this row. What do you like about this? The solo travelers, they're like, and they have a persona that they have defined. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we need to give them, I hate to do this, but we need, do need to give them credit. This is damn good. Like they segmented up here. That is really, and the, what else? The discomforts, they don't come to discomforts, they don't find interface. Yeah, they're, good. they're gonna have to figure that out, but then you heard them talking about that and they were very open about it. It's like, hey, we don't wanna, we don't wanna narrow this thing down too quickly, right? Good. What else? Yes? Um, I would just start, um, I've been traveling before solo, I would start, what's your social life back home, to understand if they may be an introverted back home, and <laughs> be a, a sales back home, to understand what's about. What's it, exactly. The, it, it was really interesting in here that one of the questions, one of the comments they were making while you're talking is, some people when they go travel don't want to talk to other people. They don't want to meet other people. They're basically introverts. Now that might not be everybody at all, but may, that's an interesting thing to know and to put, put, put a pin in it over here and say there are these people and everybody assumes that everybody when they travel wants to talk to people and, and party, right? Especially women. What? Especially women. That's correct. Especially women what? Are like kind of a, oh. if, they, if someone reaches us, just to ask us questions. Yeah. I think there's also, maybe it's women, maybe it's introverts. You had your hand up. Yes. Uh, we were talking that uh, maybe even, well, discomfort may not be even a problem. Because, well, I have seen people traveling to Colombia, especially Europeans, and it's like they, they want to suffer. I mean, <laughs> they go like to the world. Maybe they're criminals uh, trying to get away from. <laughs> 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 uh, if you're traveling, you know you're going to be like, So that's interesting. So y y you're, you're saying the assumption here is this is a bad thing. And, and, I, and, and I think that's really interesting. Maybe that word isn't the right word. Maybe, you know, it's, it's, 
what is it something that would make your experience more valuable, right? I don't know if you thought about it. No, you can't respond. You can't respond. This is just an educational exercise. You'll, you'll end up defending yourself. Um, let me go here and then back. Yes? Yes, um, I, I was going to suggest um, trying to dig in on some of the psychology behind why a solar traveler would have a discomfort. Uh-huh. You know. Psychology. That, that starts to worry me. <laughs> I'd have to think more about that. I'd have to think more about that. All right? Yes. Wait, no, I said I would come back to you. Yes. Uh, going to, uh, rather than going to, uh, going to uh, hotels, this would have, I think this would have gone to hotels because there are a lot of Instead of going to hotels, they should have gone to what? Hostels. Hostels. And then a lot of solar travels are right away, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, also they could have just, I mean, probably uh, uh, talked to boot campers themselves because. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of students at, on campus today because it's uh, summer break. Yeah. Or, um, like one of our team members here suggested, you could you could also put up, uh, you know, uh, social media posts on the QU yeah. forums. If, if, I mean, you could it, reach out to people. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> you went someplace else when the answer might have been right here in right. front of you, right? right? Because, because all of us here are pretty much independent. So, you know, we are, we are here from different parts of the world, so technically we are solar travelers. Yeah. Right, so... Good point. point. Very good point. So let me go back here. Yes. Um, I, I was one of the people they interviewed. And I think, as well, they probably they wanted much time to do everything to just put a factor into it. Yeah. Uh, this is brutally unfair, just to be clear. <laughs> brutally unfair. But that doesn't mean you can't learn from it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, this, and, you, and you will be amazed what you get done by Friday. Wait, I, I just want I just want before, hold your second point because you can remember this the way that they described as broadly open they weren't leading the, the witness was really it was like they they had heard what was said ten minutes before and they applied it right away right to theirs and, and, but it sounds like what you're saying is no that's how they really did it they really were open ended they were trying to figure out what the problem is they weren't predisposed to to, to pushing you what's the next part. They were put so fast, yeah. Good, good. That, that's actually great, because here we're getting feedback from the other side here of what it feels like to be interviewed. Who interviewed you? Margarita and uh, Mary. OK, Margarita and Mary. Were they good interviewers? They were great, yeah. yeah. I would get them to do it again if I, I would take <laughs> OK. So, so it. So, let's think about this, all right? Now, can you two stand up again and face the crowd? Come on over here. Come on over here. Right over here. Just stand here. With, with, the, with that aggressive scout. And then, can you two stand right here? Who do you think is going to be more successful walking up to people they don't know? <laughs> they're, they're all rock stars here. <laughs> no, this, I'm making a serious point. I'm taking, I make a serious point. When you take these two people, they should have been speaking to the people in the class and these two should have been going up to total strangers, right? Yeah. Right? You got to think through this stuff as you had to. Thank you very much. We love you all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've been lifting my whole life to look like this, and now you're making fun of me. <laughs> I mean, I, like an airport might have been a good place for them to go. It's not too far. It's just a train, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so now we're diving into point three is, did you go to good places? So we first talked about, did you define the right problem? Did you have the right tone you know, in, in this up front? And I think they did a very good job at that. And then the process of how they went about it, we, 
is room for improvement. And there's room for improvement in everyone's. I mean, if I was in your shoes, if we had the Mark Zuckerbergers in your shoes, I guarantee you there'd be room for improvement. Um, so, but the watering holes, if they had more time and they thought more thoughtful about it, they probably could have come up with better ones too. And they should have figured out how did they get the, the if, interviewing the class, you, you knew the class was a, a good uh, source for you? Yeah. yeah. So you should have had them do the class and you guys went out in hindsight, right? Yeah. N now that you know this. Um, yes? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And what is that? That is another market segment, right? And you have to look at the different market segments and understand it's going to be a totally different demographic psychographic for that. Even if the demographic's the same, the psychographic is going to be different. So you're going to have target customer profiles that you break down here. But that's what they were doing, right? And they actually went to hotel managers and asked them about profiles. This is really, you know, I don't mean to make you guys feel good because that's not what I'm here to do. Um, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> Wait, what happened to the other person? He just left. <laughs> you, oh, I, we thought you went into therapy. <laughs> um, but they went up, they went through this, and then they did something very interesting that they didn't mention except in, in the uh, side session. They didn't just go to the end users and ask them. They went to the hotel manager and asked the hotel managers, what types of profiles do you see? And they built these profiles of the different types of people, right? Exactly what you're talking about. And so um, that's a really good thing. You don't just go to the people themselves. Sometimes a bank shot is even better. Go to people who observe it. And I just gave him the card of someone who's been doing this for 30 years at Lady Elliot Island. And he, he probably has a lot of knowledge about, oh, here's the different types of people that come through. Actually, he was telling me about that. He likes the college students from University of Georgia. You know, that's what he likes. They're very well behaved. I think there's some people he doesn't like, but you'd have to get him to open up on that. But this bank shot idea. And then, have you ever, so this is, you know, when you get down here, we're starting to get a little specific, but you'd solve these problems first before you started writing the script. All right, great, great example. So come on up and tell, tell us what, what else what else about this? Let's bring this to closure. Um, well, if they said that they, have, they hadn't troubled on their own before, we were curious to find out why they hadn't troubled alone before, so we captured that. Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a market that's not out there, but could be out there. Yeah. And it's so it's unlocking a market. Yeah. It's unlocking them. Oh, it's also your anti-persona. Oh, good. So you're trying to figure out. I like that. I, I think it's very hard if someone's not going to travel on their own to unlock a market that, to say, oh, you should start traveling on your own. We'll make it comfortable for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, something else to mention is we, we talked about the discomfort as a team, but to, the cu to our customers or our participants, we said, what are your biggest pain points? Mm -hmm. Pain points, so let me just say this. Pain point sounds like kind of a business schoolish type of term, right? You really want to talk in their level, right? And you say, you know, what, why would you do it? What makes it good? What makes it bad? Dummy this stuff down. Don't try to impress, you know, professorial types at QUT. Dummy it down to, to your end user and make it, and make it, make yourself vulnerable so you're not, you know, smarty pants to them. You're like, they feel so good about opening up to you. Uh, and then the final question was, if you had a magic wand and you could do anything around being a solo traveler, what would you do? So that's when people went on crazy tangents. That was really easy. That's a great question. That's a great question. Oh, and what do you think I didn't ask you? What did I forget to ask you? Yeah. The one thing you also have to say is, is this that important in the overall scheme? How important is traveling to you? Right? Because you're like, this is important. And then you find out, no, it actually isn't important. I spend like 0.1% of my time worrying about this. And you're like, no, but that's important to me. It's like, but it's not important to me. Right? So um, 
that's, you know, what questions didn't I, how, how does this fit into your overall life? How much time do you spend traveling? How much budget do you spend on traveling? It, it, does it really make that big a difference to you? And to find out if this really is a, a substantial problem. Because, um, uh, well, anyway, we'll get to that later. All right, thank you very much. Well done. So let me, let me just say, we don't need to do this in front of the, the, pull people up in front of the class, and you don't need me here. You can do this with each other. This is what we do in our class at MIT. We start on this, and then we say, fantastic. You don't need me anymore. Just help each other. And then you can help each other, and that's, again, going to the strength of the pack is in the wolf, but the strength of the wolf is in the pack. You all can start helping each other to improve your primary market research. And it's not intuitive. I mean, it is not obvious. Like, you're probably sitting there going, oh, God, we should have thought of all this stuff. It's impossible to think of it. You're out there within three hours doing it, and same for the other team, and hopefully you get some insights from this. Um, and that's the whole point here. And then you just get better and better, and you help each other. All right, um, any other questions? You had your hand up. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, I was thinking the magic wand question, isn't that, is that getting too close to having the user design your solution for you, or is that not really? I, I, I don't mind that question. I would say, to me, I always like what makes a good trip, what, what makes a good day for you, what makes a bad day for you. And then if you, ha if you said, what, if you had a wish, what would it be you know, to make an, a, a good day? And they might not know, but that's OK. And maybe they say a faster horse and buggy. All right, thank you very much. Now I know that my car is probably a good idea, <laughs> right? Yes? Um, we've always said, like, broadly open is the best way to go. But is that a weakness? Because then you need to interview 100 people before you get two answers that are You have to balance this. Like, you've got to get, you, you got to get to Melbourne by 10 o'clock tonight, you know? <laughs> and so you're asking this, and this is why she felt rushed. Like, you're starting that. And you're, all right, good, now we got to move on, and we got to get there. In, in real life, you kind of you, you know when the oscillations are getting to the point where you're starting to feel comfortable about it. Um, you, you get that. So you can't just you know, be out there stuttering your navel indefinitely. you got to converge at some point. But you have to give time to figure out at the beginning, are you headed in the right direction? But really, that's a really fair point. You don't keep asking open-ended questions you know, forever. You start zeroing down into it. There's a, uh, um, there's a, uh, there's a really good uh, thing online by IDO called um, Deep Dive. It's about how they designed the shopping cart, redesign the shopping cart. You don't need to redesign the shopping cart. That's not the point. The point is, what's the process they went through to think about how would you redesign the shopping cart? And they talk about how at the beginning, every idea is crazy, is accepted, and then you do it, but then you start to funnel it down into something that you can then actually make at some point. Is this over one interview or over the 10 interviews? Depends how, it depends how much time you have, you know, <laughs> your financial resources, how much time you have, how big the reward will be when it's all said and done. Um, and it, it, you don't time bound it. It's basically when you start seeing the same answer over and over again, when you've got a good target customer, and as soon as they start, you can finish the sentence. Now you, now you don't need to do more interviews on that. You can move to the next stage. You, basically, as an engineer, you, the oscillations are out of the system. You now kind of know what the answer is going to be. Once you see this profile and you recognize with this proxy product and this watering hole that this is very likely going to be the answer, now we move on to the next stage and we're moving down the funnel. Yes? So our team, we wrote 12 questions that we wanted to ask. And within the first minute, the first interview, I realized that Good for you, because you weren't stubborn, right? First of all, I felt guilty for, for the fact that I'm not like following the script. But, uh, but why wouldn't you follow the script? Just, to, just because we agreed that these are the questions we're going to ask. But yeah, but you're leading the witness when you're asking those questions. Well, I, don't, I, sh I shouldn't say. I, I, I need to see the questions. But very likely, you're leading the witness. Right, and I just felt that I'm getting a lot more information by basically the interesting information was out of the conversation, not of the yeah. yes, no, answer. Yeah. 
But what happens is that once you start moving down it, you start to have to have a questionnaire to get consistent data that you can start measuring against it. But at the beginning, you're just kind of doing this random walk around to figure out what are the right questions to ask, right? Right, right. so I, I guess that's the point that I felt that, that we, we should have like formed the questions after we did your interviews. Yeah. And not before. Yeah. Okay. But you had, you had two hours, so don't. Don't kill yourself. <laughs> you do the best you can. Right, let me go one here, and then, then we'll go, go back. I personally feel discomfort itself is quite broad. It can be the language. Oh, yeah. Discomforts? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And that's what they said. The, the teams, to give the team credit, they said, we, 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 where are they? They said it wasn't, dis, discomfort wasn't the word you used. What was the word you used? Pain points. Pain points, yeah. They started wheeling out their MBA bullshit, like, can we synergize with you? Are you interested in blockchain? What about some collaborative consumption platform models? You know. Do you have an MBA? Uh, I'm about to finish it. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> Got to leave that stuff behind when you come here. You're a marketer. Yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm saying with pain points. Like some people, yeah. But it's better to it's better to act like you're dumb and ask use words that they say, you know, that they'll say, oh, let me explain to you. That's like, oh, good, please explain to me. You know, I'm so dumb, please explain to me. <laughs> um, that's a good interview when you have that. But you have to, you can't dummy it down so they think you're a rock and there's no place to start, right? You gotta you gotta kind of shoot just a little below. Yeah, yeah. What makes what, what? Yeah, what makes what makes for a good trip? What makes for a shitty trip? What makes for a what, you know? Problems is kind of problems. I, I don't know. I I I, I kind of stay away from that one. All right. So let's uh, let's shift gears. So. Um,